few nuggets I'll start off with uh, for you guys. Um, I still feel good about um, where things stand with four-star defensive back Kai Bates. As I pointed out in our art in my article, I think in, it's a it's a weeks thing as far as when he decides. I feel good that you know FSU's positioned uh, very well as far as in that recruitment. Um, another guy that I've noticed got a lot of uh, uh, just momentum was um, 2025 linebacker. Zay, I would say it's right. I call him, I'm just going to call him Zay, but Zay Randy Sale, he's out, he's out of Washington. He's rated the 149th best prospect overall in the state of, or in just the country, but also the 14th linebacker nationally by on three. He's a guy I've heard a lot of momentum with. I don't think a decision is like imminent or anything, but I think uh, FSU, based on the intel I got, you know, throughout the week is looking really uh you know strong as far as in this recruitment he visited i think believe for the north alabama game uh you can go to on three there's there's certainly a story if you go to his profile there's a story on there from our matt lasier on him and talks about how he, uh, you know the, the impressions he made four-star linebacker we know uh, fsu's already uh you know got one in the class and ethan pritchard out of seminole uh, sanford seminole in florida so Adding another guy like that, I think, is going to be a big deal. Um, so I think uh, they position themselves very well there. And then the last nugget, I think, will make people probably a little bit, little bit excited uh, somewhat. Um, is I've heard some positive traction um, with FSU and Florida commit five-star defensive lineman LJ McCray. I've Ooh. heard some good positive traction lately with that one. Um, I've, I've heard I, now it's certainly far from over. It's a battle. That hasn't changed, but I've heard a, a little bit of positive traction with FSU. Certainly, Florida doesn't have a defensive tackle coach or defensive line coach or whatever they yeah. list it, but I, I've just heard some positive stuff behind the scenes of how that's going with FSU. There's still work to do, still getting it, but um, I've heard some, you know, some positive, little positive things uh, regarding him. And then that greatly, I think, impacts his teammate, defensive back Zay Mincy, who I've already said, like, I think out of all the DBs, I think he is probably the most coveted uh, that they're pushing for. So I think um, that's a guy to keep an eye on as well if um, FSU were to flip uh, down the line with LJ McCray. I think LJ would probably still take it, you know, down the line. Um, and then, um, but we'll just have to wait, see how, and monitor how that that develops, but certainly I wanted to mention those few things uh, to kick this thing off. Five star plus wide receiver Jeremiah Smith. I know people are wondering, like, what's the deal there? What's going on? I still think I feel the same way I did after the Miami game, guys. I think it comes down to that official visit on December eighth. No, I don't. I'm not in the in the group that feels like oh, Florida is this strong threat. I think it's FSU or Ohio State. Um, I feel strongly about that. So I think um, really it's going to come down to that official visit. There is still momentum building there. And uh, I really, I really think it's, it's a possibility. I, I do. I would not tell you if I, I didn't think there was a chance and I thought, ah, he's just going through the process guys. He's going to probably stick with Ohio state. I think there's some things working in FSU's area that they're, they're trending with, but at the same time, I think um, overall, they got to nail it on this official visit, guys. They got to nail, nail, nail it on this visit. Um, if they do that, I will have a sense, guys, one way or the other, if this is going to happen after that official visit. I feel very confident in saying that. So One thing that's really ramped up as well is that transfer portal. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions about the transfer portal and some targets that are potentially out there. Uh, I'll let you kind of take the reins and tell us <laughs> what you've heard uh, is, is you know, kind of going on in the transfer portal at this point in time. Yeah, I think the most important thing to for people to know is like it's going to be a very slow and, and, and I would say very selective process as far as FSU goes. Um, certainly, you know, I'll address the quarterback, uh, DJ Ugalage. Did I say it right? I don't know. I might not say it DJ. right. But we'll, we'll I'll just call him DJ. Uh, Washington, uh, Oregon, Oregon State quarterback. Yeah. Um, that's a guy that I've heard that the main thing I can tell people is that he's on the board. Mm. Like, I'm not saying that he's the number one guy or he will be the number one guy if there isn't someone else that they are waiting to see. Um, but he's a guy that I definitely know is on their board. 
that they're interested in that there's I've heard that there would be um, mutual interest interests. Uh, Get Down tells us how to pronounce it. There you Thank go. You get down. You, I ain't going to try that. I'll <laughs> let Ben do it. But um, I'll still call him um, DJ. But I think the main two thing to realize with the quarterback position is you don't want somebody that's kind of, you know, a star, but he's young and he's like a sophomore. You want somebody uh, pre- preferred to be experienced, you know, knows how to handle whatever situation. You can put him in there. You can throw him. And the fit's got to be kind of when that fits everything FSU wants to do on offense. And I think if you watch DJ and the stuff they do, it does fit what they do as far as uh, he, he's mobile enough to go. If he needs to run, he can certainly uh, make all the passes. I think he had like 27 touchdowns around 2,600 yards this year for Oregon state. And, and we know how FSU compiles the talent around him. So he's certainly going to have more talent around uh, if he did up at FSU. So that's the type of, I think, quarterback they would look for is somebody that, one, fits them, but two, is just, you know, one or two year type of option. Uh, preferably, um, if you can get multiple year, it'd be great, but I think that's the type of guy. But they're not in a rush to do that because, obviously, they're playing for an ACC championship. Win that, you know, potentially you play in the playoff. You don't want to, you know, mess your chemistry up. And two, that's why I say you want an experienced guy because, there's no set guy when it comes to a starter um, like previously when people were asking, like, are they going to take – are they going to go to the portal? Are they going to stick with Jordan? And, and certainly they stuck with Jordan because they already had a starting quarterback. So this is a little bit different where you don't have a set starter. Um, so I do, I do think they're going to engage and look inside the portal to see if that fits there. And it's also just a chance where, you know what, if – if that guy's not there, you know, they're, they're very comfortable with Brock Glenn, Tate Rodemaker, A.J. Duffy, Luke Cormahawk is going to come into the fold. So they're comfortable with their, their room. But I think certainly you can tell, and based on what we saw, a lot I saw last week, that's certainly something that you need to explore because, you know, Tate didn't look like a guy to me that's like, okay, I'm ready to be the man. Let's talk about some flips, potential flips. Okay. Uh, Vitus33 asks, are we giving up on Jason Zandamella, or is there a chance still Zandamella committed to USC back in yeah. June? Vitus, I still think they're working on it. Um, I think uh, the thing to watch is these next few weeks in December uh, for official visits. Um, I think that's what I'm kind of focused on. For those that don't know, he still has an official visit available to take to FSU. He didn't never took his official. I think they're still working on him, but it's a, it's kind of a wait and see to see, get him on campus. Um, I do know the communication is still there, but it's still wait and see. Obviously USC has not had the season they envisioned. Um, and FSU certainly has gone way beyond the, the envision of what they saw. And he likes, he likes Alex Atkins a lot. I mean, there's no, there's no question about that. And they do need a pure center. So they're certainly, uh, they do covet him. They do want him, but it's kind of a wait and see if that uh, visit is set up. I hope to have more on that over the weekend, guys, maybe on Sunday. Um, But um, he is a guy that I think is still a possibility, but again, have to get that visit. A potential flip back that FSU wants to avoid, Armando Blunt. Uh, Going back to Miami, some people are a little concerned. What are your thoughts? Ease our minds a little bit, Michael. (laughs) Well, I kind of covered this in in my breakdown, uh, guys. I mean, yeah, there was some talking with Miami, but I also feel like, you know, I would say a a strong majority of the people, whether they're close to Armando or from the FSU side, they tell me that they feel good that he will – be a null um they think he will be there um i feel i don't think anything's changed as far as that goes i think he also will take an official visit to fsu in december he'll be a part of that now the original plan was december 8th but i could see them pushing that to like december 16th Mm -hmm. so they get him right before uh that um timeline now if they do it early i think that gives you an indication that they feel really good about um kind of their position that they feel like they can lock it down once he visits on the eighth. But I think a majority it's going to be, you know, I I would lean towards that 16th date that you see them, but yeah, Miami's going to push this has it. This is not a new development. We knew they weren't going to just go down, you know, and say, Oh, one in our backyard, a five star, we're just going (laughs) to let him enroll. But um, I think 
I think right now everything I've gotten is, yes, it's a concern. It, it has to be. If it's not, you're not breathing. Uh, it has to be a concern. But at the same time, um, I think he does um, end up uh, with FSU. Everything I've gotten so far is in the intel. But, yeah, they're going to have to sweat it out until uh, you know this thing's over. It's not going to be over. It's never – it's never truly over when you're dealing with, you know, Miami prospects that Miami wants. You're going to have to fight and, and do everything right. But uh, I think overall, I, I, I feel good about uh, just, you know, where they sit or where the couple is. I'm not going to lie and say I'm not concerned. There is concern there. But at, at this time, I still think um, FSU is the place.